This is basically what the situation is. She's 20 weeks pregnant. Her, her, her fetus has been diagnosed with a fatal condition. The fetus will either be, will just be not viable, you know, if she carries it to term and it's delivered, or that it will die within days or hours or minutes. This is how serious of a fatal condition it is. And at the same time, she is having problems with her pregnancy. She's gone to the ER three times. She is having, she's had two prior C-sections. So if she has to carry it to term, she's gonna have another C-section. And she wants to have more children and the scarring as a result of the C-section, as well as the complications during the pregnancy and from any delivery, put at risk her ability to have more children. She has two children already and she wants to have a large family. And so they are putting this at risk. And essentially what they, her doctor is saying is that her care, this pregnancy has a substantial risk of causing major bodily harm. That's the law. It's either life-threatening or is there a substantial risk of causing major bodily harm to a bodily function? And the bodily function here is her fertility, her ability to have more children. So in this crazy world that Ken Paxton is living in, he is forcing her to carry a non-viable fetus that may actually prevent her from being able to have more children. It is her fertility, it's her ability to have more children that is being put at risk for carrying this non-viable fetus. That's where we're at today. This is how unreasonable these applications of these laws are. When the Supreme Court issued their Dobbs opinion overturning Roe v. Wade and saying this should be a state's issue, they're really saying it should be um, up to these one or two, usually men, interpretation of what the law is and this unreasonableness of the application of the law. I'm going to talk a little bit later about the unreasonableness of something that's happening to a woman also in Ohio, because this is not just limited to Texas. But before I do that, I want to read, read a section of the, the petition that, that the, the woman and her husband and her doctors had to had to file to show that this was medically unnecessary of a of a, you know why she needed to have an abortion why she should fall into the exception for an illegal abortion in the um in texas and it says that um the lower court's order allowing her to have an abortion described what she's going through. It says, the longer Miss Cox stays pregnant, the greater the risks to her life. Miss Cox has already been to three emergency rooms with severe cramping, diarrhea, and leaking unidentifiable fluid. And I read that to you and all of it, even though uh, the idea of the fluids, et cetera, may be something we don't all wanna hear about, is because this poor woman has to put this into a court document. This poor woman who has just been told that her fetus has a fatal diagnosis, you know, already the trauma of a diagnosis like that. And then now she has to put these kind of very personal and private details about what she's going through in a court document because it's not enough that her doctor thinks what she's going through means that she should have um, a, a medically exempted abortion, but some judge somewhere has to decide this and the attorney general has to debate whether or not all those fluids and emergency trips are enough. And if you think I'm just being facetious, I'll tell you what he does say about this. So Ken Paxton doesn't shy away from this. And in his petition to the court to overturn the lower court's ruling, allowing her to get an abortion, says that Miss Cox asserts she has experienced intermittent cramping, diarrhea, and mild fluid leaking. According to Miss Cox, each time she was examined for these complaints by emergency room physicians, she was sent home. Okay, uh, so, so according to him, shouldn't matter. He thinks, you know, this is where this poor woman is at. This is why women across the country 
care so much about the right to have choice because they understand this isn't just about, you know, carrying a viable fetus to term or not. This is about control over women's bodies. This is about a literal discussion about whether or not some of the most private details, whether or not the fluids that are happening as a result of this pregnancy that she's having are enough for this poor woman to get a medically necessary abortion, even though her doctors have already said that to be the case. But he thinks that his interpretation of whether or not those fluids qualify or not should be more important than her doctor's interpretation. He doesn't have a medical degree, and I'm sorry, none of those judges have medical degrees either. But not only that, but it's frankly quite disgusting that anybody thinks that anybody other than the doctor and that woman should decide whether or not what she's going through is enough to have a medically necessary abortion. And frankly, because the Supreme Court decided a woman doesn't have enough control of her own body, we're in this situation where the type of fluids and whether or not they are enough or whether or not she's sent home as a result of it becomes part of a legal pleading. It's almost mind blowing in this day and age that that's the case. And you know, he, easily just goes over the idea that the doctor thinks this is reasonably necessary and he pins to the idea that the doctor says it's recommended and says that that's not strong enough for him but we know it really isn't about that at all right again it's about the fact that he thinks that she shouldn't have the right of choice her doctor shouldn't have the right of choice to be able to decide if it's medically necessary or not. And if we think this is just happening in Texas, uh, it's not, of course, we all know that, we've seen the news, but there is a poor woman in Ohio. Ohio, this was the one that just protected the right to abortion in their constitution recently. She is being charged with a felony for an abuse of a corpse because she miscarried in the toilet. And again, you know what? Sometimes I hate to talk about things so frankly, but let's be frank. If this is what women are being charged with, then we all need to know what's happening. It's a very common way for a woman to miscarry. And she, um, you know, instead of trying to go in there and take out the fetus, she flushed the fetus, which I think is also very common. And they are charging her. This is a 33 year old woman, Brittany Watts, a woman of color, and she is being charged with a felony, a felony in Ohio because she didn't scoop out the fetus and what, take it to a cemetery and bury it. Is, is, this is where we're at, this poor woman, the trauma. She's already faced the trauma of miscarry and now is being charged with abusing a corpse because she didn't dispose of it in a way that some DA thought she needed to. And again, it's the substituting of the judgment that this DA thinks their judgment is more important. And frankly, it's trying, it's a creative DA who's trying to use any means necessary to punish a woman, to punish a woman for not doing what they wanted to do. Even though here in this case, she really couldn't even control the situation. That's the update on abortion law in Texas. I'll keep you updated as the Supreme Court there makes a final ruling. My name is Dina Saigdahl with the Midas Touch Network.